Well, isn't that cute? Welcome to Lancaster Hi-Fi. I'm Stephen Lancaster, and I want to talk today about this thingamajig. <laughs> this is the Hagerman Labs Piccolo Zero head amp, otherwise known as a step-up device, maybe, or a trans-impedance amplifier. Yeah. What does it do? Well, this is designed to sit between your moving coil cartridge and your phono preamp, if your phono preamp is a moving magnet phono preamp, which is a way more common sort of phono preamp than a moving coil phono preamp. Typically, if you're into moving coil cartridges, you will have some kind of device like this. Now, if you're special, you'll have a step-up transformer. But those are kind of pricey. Now, you can get step-up transformers for under $1,000, I think. But they might not be particularly good ones or properly constructed ones because you can get into issues with ground loops with step-up transformers if they're not wired correctly. And I've done a little research on this, but that's maybe a topic for another video. A really good step-up transformer is probably going to run you close to $1,500. And that's a fair bit of change. It's not a huge amount of money, but, you know, if you've got a pretty limited hi-fi budget, then, you know, that's pretty significant. That's about, say, the cost of a really, of a pretty good <laughs> moving coil cartridge. My Riga Affida, for example, I think originally sold for around $1,500. You know, suddenly, if you're get, having to get a step-up transformer to use with your moving coil cartridge, you're essentially doubling the cost of the cartridge. There are phono preamps that can do moving coil just fine. I have one. I have the iFi iPhono 2, which can do both moving coil and moving magnet. I also have a Fisher preamplifier that can do both moving coil and moving magnet. And it's not the Fisher, it's like Sanyo Fisher. But it's the Fisher Studio Standard Series. Anyway, it's a nice preamp, okay? <laughs> and so those, those are, you know, those exist, but they're not so common. Stages to handle moving coil are not super common. So something like this comes along and says, hey, if you use this, if you buy me, you can use any phono preamp because any phono preamp you get out there is going to at least be able to do moving magnet cartridges. And how much does this cost? Compared to a step-up transformer, it's super cheap. But it's not super, super cheap. This will run you $270. So, you know, it's significant. Hell, not sure I paid $270 for anything in my system. In fact, I'm pretty sure I didn't pay $250 for anything in my system. $270, well, or $250. Anyway, but that's beside the point. Point is, this can give you a lot of versatility. Now, how does it sound? Well, it shouldn't sound like anything, but we'll see. I've got a phono preamp, the iPhono 2, that can do both moving coil and moving magnet. And so we can check it out. I'll play some music with this in between the turntable and the phono preamp 
set into moving magnet mode. And then I'll take this out of the loop and go straight from the turntable to the phono preamp in moving coil mode. And we'll see. You know, it's possible that this will make it sound better because maybe this is a better sort of uh, moving coil head amp stage than is on the iPhone 2 I don't know. Now, how does this work? We've got input, RCAs, and output RCAs, and DC power supply, and a ground terminal. Now, you might wonder whether, you know, well, how does it do on, on various moving coil cartridges? Because, you know, different moving co coil cartridges have different properties, might require different input impedance and so on. I believe the idea of this is that it presents essentially zero impedance to the moving coil. This will work particularly well on cartridges like my Riga Affida, which has about 10 ohms internal impedance. Another, you know, 10 ohms is pretty typical. Lower values are common as well. But there are some moving coil cartridges that have relatively large internal impedance. And I believe Chris was quoting me some numbers you know, in the hundreds of ohms for certain moving coil cartridges. And he said, this doesn't do well with those. That's important to keep in mind that this is not a universal device in terms of, you know, it, it won't necessarily do great things with every moving coil cartridge. But it does have some versatility. There are adjustments to be made. I will show you where those are. All right, let's check it out. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. See what I do for you guys. So, in order to use different moving coil cartridges that have different internal impedances, there are adjustments to be made. And you can do it according to the internal impedance of the cartridge, or you can do it according to trying to mimic a certain turns ratio in a step-up transformer. And those adjustments are done. There's just these little bitty dip switches here, one for each channel, one set of dip switches for each channel. And so I have it set according to the 10 ohm internal impedance of my moving coil cartridge. And I believe that means that this has, in this setting, has 20 dB of gain, otherwise known as 100 microvolts per microamp. I think that's right. All right, let's put it back together. So, you know, it's not uh, super user friendly. You gotta, you gotta know the specs of your cartridge. And you gotta look up in the manual, you know, what adjustments to make. And you actually have to take the back off to make the adjustments. And you gotta manipulate those tiny little dip switches. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend trying that with your fingernail. I use pointy tweezers. If you're the sort to use a moving coil cartridge, then you're probably not too put off by this sort of user interface. And you're, you're probably also the sort who will have the specs at hand when it comes time. I can't believe I just dumped that whole cup full of pens and brushes. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, so again, we'll try this in the signal path and then we'll take it out and see. It'll be interesting to do the test, but, you know, as long as this sounds fine, 
it has an inherent utility that can justify its cost. Like, unless it screws things up, which it could, right? If it's badly designed, it could screw up the sound. But unless it screws up the sound, it has utility in that you can use any moving magnet stage if you have a moving coil cartridge, as long as your moving coil cartridge is in that sort of 10 ohm-ish and maybe a little more, maybe a little less internal impedance. I have to pick those things up later. Uh, of course, there's like a couple of receivers here and the back is open on one of them and All right, let's check it out. All right, so it's pretty simple to set this up, or at least now that the dip switches are properly set. Plug white into white, red into red. And he's going to the phono preamp here. It's down here that you probably can't see. and the power. Okay, now I'll have to set up the iFly here to do moving coil. I'm going to give it one more go with the Hagerman and the moving magnet setting on the iFly. But this time I've upped the gain on the iFi by 12 dB. It just seems not to be as much gain as, well, for example, this EAR834 clone here that I'll also be testing in a different video. sure that I'm hearing any differences other than volume, loudness, but that's a good thing. I mean, yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, you know, if I turn it down just a bit, the noise level goes down, of course. Let's discuss. So I don't know that I can tell whether the Piccolo Zero has a significant effect on the sound. And if it doesn't, that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Because if it doesn't have an effect on the sound, then it's as good as a step-up transformer. And therefore its value comes in its basic utility to allow you to use a moving coil cartridge with a moving magnet phono preamp. I've borrowed it to check it out, but also because I've got a moving magnet phono preamp that I want to test and evaluate. Also, I've got a Riga Phono Mini A2D that I use to 
rip my vinyl, right? Convert, record my vinyl into my laptop, into Audacity, and digitize my vinyl, make FLAC files so that I can stream at work and on my streamer upstairs. And without that device, I would only be able to use that Riga Phono Mini with a moving magnet cartridge. Now, I have a couple of moving magnet cartridges, but the one I have set up for my Pioneer PL630 turntable is quite old. It's from the 80s. Under the microscope, it appears to be worn. There appear to be sort of shoulders worn into the diamond a bit. And it's also really high compliance, whereas I need a lower compliance stylus cartridge for that turntable, for that tone arm. In other words, that moving magnet cartridge is far from ideal, and I'd much rather be able to use my moving coil cartridge, which is a very nice newer one. Not brand new, but much newer. And so with a device like the Hagerman, or with the Hagerman Piccolo Zero, I can use that other photo preamp that allows me to digitize my records. I can use a photo preamp that's been sent to me for evaluation by a viewer. A tube photo preamp. I can make my own tube photo preamp that needs a step up from moving coil in order to work. Now, certainly I could get a step-up transformer, and maybe I will at some point, but probably not right away. Probably now it's not really in my budget. Maybe I'll make my own step-up transformer. That'd be sort of more my style if I could find the transformers to do it with. I'm kind of inclined Going out on a limb here, I'm kind of inclined to buy my own Piccolo Zero for its utility. Will I do it right away? I might. I might, because I'm going to have to give that back to Chris soon. And I still want to be able to digitize my vinyl. And I'd rather be able to use my best cartridge to do it. I recommend it. Yeah, it seems a shame to have to spend extra money just to use a moving coil cartridge, but you're kind of already spending extra money for a moving coil cartridge anyway, aren't you? And 270 extra dollars is quite a bit less than 1500 extra dollars, which essentially doubles the cost of using that moving coil cartridge in the case of mine. So, pretty nifty device. I'm psyched about it. Well, I hope you got something out of that video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, do all those algorithmic things to help me grow my channel. I'd really appreciate that. And what I'd most appreciate is if you tune in again. And if you do, I will talk to you later. Have a good one.